Hi there, Ferdinand here from Animator Island. I think it's about time that we have a little community talk back um, because you guys wrote some nice and amazing stuff in the comments. First of all, thank you so much for all your encouraging comments under our videos and articles. The fact that we know that you read and watch our stuff is what keeps us going. And that's probably also true for a lot of other YouTubers and bloggers that you follow. You should let them know from time to time that you appreciate what they're doing because um, that's what keeps them going, that's what makes it fun for us. Of course we also saw your complaints and suggestions about the video and audio quality. I promise uh, on the one hand side I'm, I'm learning I'm still learning how to do all this technology stuff with cameras and uh, microphones and I got new equipment, better equipment. And then in a couple of cases, you know, like at the FMX interviews, I was really nervous. I mean, uh, if you film something, you, you would normally think that you would never forget to properly focus or you would check if you can trust the autofocus and stuff like that. But then, you know, if you are standing there in front of this really important person and um, you really want to ask good questions, then it's just very overwhelming. In our first news video, we ask if you prefer 2D or 3D and if you think uh, 2D still got a chance nowadays. And Jashesh, 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 S Mystery, something like that, you can read the comment here. Uh, likes 2D for cartoons but prefers 3D because it brings depth, appeal and a sense of presence into this scene. I can totally see what you mean. Uh, 3D definitely has an advantage um, with regard to depth and uh, keeping volume and all that stuff. In 2D obviously it's harder to keep a model, it's, it's harder to bring realistic volume to things. Uh, you can do cartoony stuff much easier in 2D. But I think it's pretty interesting actually if you bring the strength of the other medium into, into, into the other. Like in Hotel Transylvania they did some amazing 2D cartoon stuff in 3D. And there are people who can draw very realistic in 2D and even do animation with that. Alexandra Buchholz is voting for more 2D movies and really liked seeing the 2D part in Kung Fu Panda. And I have to agree, I really like this intro. Then there is Easy 619 who likes the Paperman style and wants to see more films done like that. And I agree, the Paperman style was, was amazing. And probably that is the future. And as we just said, there are things that you can do better in 3D and I think especially for backgrounds it uh, is amazing to mix those things. Like you could have your characters um, with expressive lines, you know, all those advantages of 2D. But then you have a, a correctly, perspectively drawn environment that the computer did and you can make camera motions uh, through it that would be very difficult to do in 2D. So yeah, maybe we'll see more stuff like that. And um, there already was like, I think in Treasure Planet, uh, a lot of the backgrounds were CG and you had actually some camera uh, pens and camera motions that you could only do in 3D. Yeah, I, I really hope the studios will explore that more. I, I certainly will. Eleanor199 wonders what the detective was drinking in the first news show. Well, I will reveal it to you in a riddle. It was a cocktail mixed from carbonated water, sugar, color, namely caramel E150D, phosphoric acid and natural flavorings including caffeine. The first person who knows what it is gets a bottle of coke. We had a tutorial about the placer note in Maya, namely that you should not animate it if you want your IK feed uh, to function properly in your 3D rig. And um, it was Todd who uh, remarked that you don't necessarily have to use the placer note in, in that way. He comes in fact from the game industry where you indeed sometimes have to use the placer note differently for a technical reason. Like in, in games you need to create those walk cycles that stay on the spot, for example. But you know, the, the thing about rules is it's good to know 
what things were meant for, like what the why the placer note is there, and what the rigor was thinking when they put it there in the way that they put it there. Um, and I think only if you know that, um, then of course you can break the rule if you uh, have a case where you really need to or where you can really justify that. But it will be like this for all our tutorials, you know, it's only, it's only guidelines. Nuggets asked, Nuggets? Hmm, Nuggets. Nuggets asked how we get our interview partners uh, from the industry, like, you know, the people we talked at at the FMX, how do we get them to talk to us? Um, yeah, and you're right, that's, that's not easy. Like, I try to get a couple of people to talk to us just you know, outside the FMX and I needed to really talk them into uh, giving the interview. But at the festivals, it's uh, a lot easier. So I, if, if you want to interview people or talk to professionals, definitely go to conferences and festivals because they are, uh, are just running around there. And um, in case of the FMX, we actually had uh, a cooperation with the FMX, you know, they were treating us like every other journalist and they were actually uh, helping us with the appointments. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys from the FMX for that. Uh, that's really cool. So you could always try uh, that, you know, if you're a blogger uh, or uh, you do it for your school, you could ask if you could get a press accreditation and, and, and that support. And then, of course, there are also people who uh, come to my university, the Film Academy Baden-Württemberg, as professors or mentors or tutors. And yeah, I annoy some of them uh, until they finally agree to give me an interview. I had a little discussion with JK about Frozen and you guys joined in the comments. We uh, actually we also had another article on Animator Island uh, about uh, comparison of Tangled and Frozen. So uh, yeah, you guys wrote a lot about those two movies. Sabina K, for example, was talking about how Anna and Elsa's designs are so similar and doll-like. Um, and yeah, that the sister's relationship was not really believable. And I, I have to agree with that. And for example, Lilo and Stitch, she mentions, was uh, much better with that. Oh, I like what she suggested. Like, uh, you know, that Duke guy in Frozen that seemed to be the evil guy at one point, but then in the end was not really the main evil guy. Um, her suggestion is that it could have been like the uncle who pushes Hans to be the evil guy. And um, yeah, I, I feel like this would have been something. Andrew Thomas noticed an interesting symbol in the film, namely when Hans shows his true self, you know, it makes a twist to the uh, villain. He uh, takes off his gloves in the background, which is, you know, an analogy to Elsa, who also wore the gloves and took her gloves out when she was showing her true self. So, um, yeah, very well spotted. I, I must say I like symbols like this and there are actually some more in Frozen. Like uh, if, if, you, if you watch it, um, doors have like uh, an amazing symbolistic role in this film. You know, doors are open, slammed and shut and locked and all these kinds of stuff. Zelda Link points out that the financial success must speak for Frozen's quality. I must admit, we actually glanced over this aspect a little bit. I think, first of all, what's very important to know uh, is that, you know, financial success and a good movie does not always go hand in hand, you know. They are very uh, dull, stupid movies that had a lot of success and there are gems that almost nobody has seen and that were a complete financial flop uh, and yet those films are film history and they may be discovered years later like one of my favorite films the iron giant uh, was like a financial flop it was not advertised very well and yeah then films don't make money so uh, it might even not have been the film itself that made the money because Disney just has so much money to advertise it very aggressively. There were trailers and posters everywhere and they have all this merchandise. Um, and I think that can make a film successful. Unfortunately, it's not only the film uh, that is important for the success of a movie. On the other hand side, there are some cool elements in Frozen. 
that might be why the audiences keep coming back to the film. I mean, the, the, the sister relationship was nice to have a theme like that in a movie. And of course, the songs that really stick in your head. So it's important for us to know if something is financial successful, why it is so successful. But on the other hand side, I, I think, you know, it's not all about money. Maybe you are in that situation. You make some art or films or comics and you really put your heart and soul into it. But um, big companies just have this immense budget for merchandise and advertisement that you don't have. So um, if you're not that appreciated by the masses, it might just be that the advertisement was bad. And if something is appreciated by the masses, it might just be that the advertisement was good. That's how things are in our industry. Advertisement is a very, very big factor. Last but not least, we made a couple tutorials and it would be great if you could tell us which ones were your favorite, uh, also out of all the other episodes, uh, and what topics you would like us to tackle next. Please let us know any suggestions, any feedback in the comments below. And don't forget, we have written articles on animatorisland.com like this one, which encourages you to keep changing your key poses if you realize that they don't work that well in the flow. Or um, this one, which talks a little more in depth about the uncanny valley. And then this one about the insane amount of practice that we artists need to uh, improve our art skills to a better level. This was Ferdinand Engländer. Stay tuned for the next round of Animator Island TV.